Hi guys, I'm back for a little bit. Um, I was really hoping to be able to get on here and talk about some space pictures that we did and uh, opening the observatories and having lots of astro fun, but to be quite frank and honest with you, this new moon cycle was terrible. We had clouds and rain every night. Last night it tried to clear up for a little bit, but even at like, I think the last time I went outside was just after midnight and it was still splotchy with clouds and the moon starting to get big again so it's just not gonna happen I'm afraid um, for at least this new moon cycle in August so just hoping and looking forward to the next one um, which is just kind of part of the nature of the beast uh, is what we're kind of figuring out with this when we do it from home you know you can't just take it easily and move it to a a nice weather location which is fine you know it makes it, it it makes for a different challenge and it's fine to learn it so really hoping to get back into some more space shots and um, image processing and the nights are slowly getting longer um, the sun sets a little bit earlier where our planet planet is turning a little bit away from the sun heading towards fall and so we're going to have some neat opportunities. I'm still very, very optimistic about fall and autumn. That just seems to be one of our best seasons here for nice, calm, mild nights um, with beautiful, clear skies and some amazing targets. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to the next few months, um, but always looking forward to the next new moon. So... But I wanted to get on here and give kind of an update since um, my last video where I I had that big trip happening where I was going to fly out and pick up my great niece and bring her back here for five days. And um, it all went fine. I uh, didn't get sick again. Knock on wood. I didn't get sick again. Um, it was hard. Uh, you know, it, it's... It, it's just tough, you know. It was it was just a little hard, but it was good overall. We I think we had a, a good time. We did a lot of fun things. Um, we played some fun board games and went roller skating, and you know we did a lot of fun things. And then I flew her back home, and then I came back, and then I was exhausted. So I made it a priority because I didn't have anything planned other than doctor's appointments. That like my regular pain management trigger appointments. I had my Botox for my neck done. I had stuff happen, but other than appointments, I made no plans, and so I just rested up, like just recovered from this trip, and that was great. That's exactly what I needed to do, um, but about five days, six days, about a week after I got back, I was struggling with ruminating thoughts. And like really struggling. And my husband has been out of town for work. He comes back tonight. Um, so I've been left alone. So I went from having a child, my husband, my cat, and myself all in the house to he left for work right after I got back from taking her home. And now I've been all alone with my cat. But that, I think, was a trigger for this, and I wanted to talk a little bit about it. That was a trigger. The being alone was definitely a trigger. The being exhausted was definitely a trigger. And just kind of recovering from some of the emotional stress of having an 11-year-old little girl who's quite demanding, who I had to kind of put my, you know, put my thumb on a little bit. So there was some emotional stuff going on. So I feel like if I if I look at it with that kind of perspective of all of these things feed into why I started ruminating. And I will tell you, I, I've told you this in previous videos. If you need me to overthink something, I am a professional at that. I can overthink something to death. I've said that before. And this is the exact same thing. It's ruminating. And because I've, I've admitted that I, too, with my bipolar disorder, I have um, a, a decent dose of OCD. Nothing that I feel like, you know, it doesn't keep me from leaving the house. It definitely could be worse. But I do have a touch of OCD. And so when I get going on 
Um, what is his name? Doctor. What is his name? He's been on Dr. Phil before. Doctor. I have to look him up. But he talks about ants. Automatic negative thoughts. Ants. And so when you when you look at all of these things that like happened to lead up to me having more of these ants in my life for like four days straight I was obsessively thinking about some things um, that I couldn't let go of I, I was talking to myself because I'm alone I know that makes me probably look kind of crazy I don't particularly care I'm very comfortable with who I am I talk to myself from time to time I do it more when my husband is out of town for work you know like or I'll talk to the cat whatever my place of talking to myself a little bit obsessive, obsessively is um, the shower. It's also where I pray <laughs> when I'm in desperation. Um, but I was having like conversations in my head trying to resolve this rumination that I couldn't get rid of. Anyway, it, it became this whole thing. I finally ended up reaching out to a person that I needed to have this conversation with. And it was just in messaging and it was fine. And I reached out to him and um, we, we went back and forth and it lifted it. It lifted it completely off. It was like I was ruminating over some things that I didn't even need to be worried about. But it was almost like after I got back from this trip and the fatigue set in and then I'm left alone and I'm tired and I might have been a little depressed because we were high every day. Like when, when this little girl was here, we went to a theme park, we went to a festival, we went roller skating, we went and got manis and petties and it was like we had a thing every day. And then flying was, you know, it's always exhausting to fly. And when you fly really far and you're on these really long flights, it's more exhausting. And so it was just this culmination of all of this energy happening. And then I get home and everything just kind of falls off the cliff. And I'm left alone and I'm tired and I'm probably a little bit, I don't want to say depressed because I don't think that, I, I, I associate depression very differently than what I've been feeling lately. It's not depression. It's it's just well, it's fatigue and exhaustion, but it's also it's also just like not doing anything. Like just like forcing myself to not do anything because I was doing so much. So I'm just I just kind of stopped. I mean, and I don't just lay around and not do anything. I mean, even when I'm watching TV, I'm crocheting. I'm usually watching something I've already watched before, so I don't have to pay attention, so I can work on a crochet project. So I've been doing a lot of crochet, which has been nice. But I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. But not depressed, but kind of just weird. And I think just because I had this exhaustion and fatigue, it really kind of opened the door to let this nasty repetitive negative thinking come right on in and kind of set up camp in my head and so before I started this video I just did a couple of quick searches and I'll I'll share what I what I found it it doesn't really say anything new but at least it can kind of explain maybe in better terms than I can what ruminating thinking is and how it's associated with bipolar disorder. So let me get my stuff out of the way here. So I was. this was the first one I did. This was just a Google search on ruminating thoughts. And the AI overview now says, ruminating thoughts are repetitive negative thoughts about negative experiences and feelings that can be intrusive and excessive. They can involve dwelling on the causes and consequences of distress and can happen in a variety of situations such as worrying about the future, dwelling on past mistakes, overanalyzing interactions, and overthinking relationship issues. The last two, the last two on here, the overanalyze in, the overanalyzing interactions and the overthinking relationship issues, that's what I was hung up on. And when I, I was talking to my mom about this yesterday, she and I went on a walk, and I was telling her that I had been struggling with some, some of this. I tell my mom everything. 
and um, I was telling her all about this and I I OD'd I told her I overdosed on ruminating thoughts I felt like I was sick I felt like I was like I felt sick. I was making myself sick over having these thoughts. And I'm so glad that I reached out to this person and I put my thoughts out there and said what I needed to say. And because I was worried about some interactions that had happened, you know, recently. And um, I, I couldn't let it go. I mean, I was making myself sick. I was feeling my bipolar disorder. I was feeling mentally unwell and you have been following me what since January on here I mean we're well into eight months in it's very very rare for me to actually feel my bipolar disorder because my medication works so well and I'm very well balanced and I'm a pretty happy person unless you know you throw me off my balance or whatever Um, but it does it seems like some things have happened recently just in the last three months that it's like one thing after another kind of shakes my balance a little bit and then I feel wrong like I feel I don't feel quite like myself and it didn't help that the last three months I was pretty much sick the entire time too so you have to look at this like broader picture when you're going through things like what else could be contributing to this sickness fatigue exhaustion um, maybe a little bit depression Maybe I was too busy. Maybe, you know, on this side of things, I'm trying to figure out how to, like, come back into my pace of life. Like, it's not just one thing that contributed to me having these thoughts, but, oh, my gosh, it was really, really bothering me. And I I just wrote this person yesterday and addressed this issue, and I haven't had any ruminating thoughts since, and I wish that I had reached out sooner and said what I needed to say and got it out, like vomited my thoughts to this person to help get it like, I don't even know how to explain it, but I wish I'd done it sooner because I do, I feel so much better. And uh, I could have saved myself a few days worth of, but see, this is the other reason too. This, I, okay, this is a very good point. I just thought of this. And my cat just came up here. She probably is gonna jump on the table. Um, I think that for some people in some situations or circumstances, the reason that they can start ruminating on stuff. So when I, okay, let me try to put this clearly. When I was first diagnosed with bipolar and I was put on my medication and like six months to a year in, I was really feeling these changes in my thinking and my perspective and my clarity of mind. And so when something bothered me, like something happened with my sister-in-law and it bothered me. And I'm like, okay, is this really bothering me or is this being overly sensitive because of bipolar disorder? So I would, I would sit on it for like three or four days to see if it really bothered me and it was worth addressing to this person or if I was just over being overreactive because of mental illness because I didn't know yet how well my medication was working for me in that way. And I think I still do it. I think to a degree I still do it because I don't want to have a knee-jerk reaction to things and I don't want to be like overly sensitive in life or overly emotional. Like I like to like find the middle ground as I go. And so when something comes up, I do think that ruminating a little bit on it is healthy. There's a healthy level of rumination that can be had. But I was not doing that this last week. I'll fully admit it. It's like I said, I was overdosing on it. It was like an alcoholic who wouldn't put down the bottle. I could I could not stop thinking these thoughts. But for whatever reason, just broaching this conversation with this person that I needed to kind of say okay this is I'm feeling this way is this like accurate or is this not accurate that made such a huge difference so I do think that with like when you know you have a tendency to overreact my whole childhood I was an overly sensitive kid I would yell at people 
that you hurt my feelings. I mean, my, I said it to my mom. I said it to my dad. I said it to my brother. Like, I said it to everybody who, like, offended me. And I'm not a millennial. Like, <laughs> I wasn't, like, triggered by everything. I'm sorry. I hate to say it that way. But it's kind of true. But I wasn't triggered by everything for any other reason than I had undiagnosed mental illness. Because on this side of my medication, I don't get triggered. I don't overreact. Like, okay, my husband would disagree. I overreact occasionally. When things go wrong, I do. But it's not like it used to be. And so when, like I said, when I started having these thoughts and I was like, is this really bothering? Like, is this worthy of being bothersome? It's like I had to weigh and measure to make sure that it was a, a what's the word? Uh, there was a logistical reason for the upset I was feeling. Like, was it true? Or was it me just making up stuff? And to a degree, it was me just making up stuff is what I kind of discovered about it. Uh, but I needed to know that, you know, and just being able to approach this person about it. And, but then there were, were some things that were absolutely, like, fair fair for me to have feelings about like there and I just I'm trying to protect the situation by not going into too much detail here but anyway that's what I was struggling with I was just really struggling with rumination the last five or six days well really about a week now because what's today Thursday oh I turned my watch on theater yeah we're on Thursday now so oh gosh yeah it's been a week now that I was ruminating and I just kind of let go of it I was able to get it under control yesterday and it's amazing the difference in peace. Um, and maybe with this channel, the more comfortable I get, um, maybe I can start having some like videos. I don't know. I can't make any promises. But like when during that situation, that place that I was, maybe if I could do a video kind of during the chaos a little bit. I mean, you've seen me do some where I'd cry. You know, I'm kind of in the middle of things. But Maybe as I get more comfortable doing this, I, I I can add some of those because I do think that it would have been helpful. But it was so hard to get my my thoughts focused. It's just tough. It's a tough balance. And and I want to get on here and continue my YouTube channel and keep talking about stuff. Sometimes there's just not much to talk about. I mean, here I am. I just am living my life with bipolar disorder. And maybe I maybe I'm just doing something that I don't think is worth sharing. And maybe that's something that I need to change about the way I see things because. Um, it, it part of why I wanted to start this channel was to not necessarily like help everyone, but show people that they're not alone. And by by just sharing my experiences, because we I think we can all relate to a degree, mental illness or not. I just think that we all live these kind of relatable lives that can just be talked about on this kind of uh, video platform that YouTube provides for us, which I think is just so super cool. So I don't know, you know, like my channel, I feel like it can go all over the place. And and for all I, I don't really care. Maybe it will. I've actually had some people <laughs> say that I should share some of my crochet on here. Um, and I really should. I, I should share some of my crochet on here because even that it's just it's part of what helps me maintain my stability and or not just crochet all my crafts my crochet my cross stitch painting whatever it is I do um, it does help manage my stability with bipolar disorder so anyway well I think here is a good time to wrap it up she's about to jump on the table <laughs> um but I just wanted to get on here and kind of give a quick update. Now she's blocking my light. Move. Move. Get out of the light. Oh, this kitty. Get out of the light, sweetie. That's a little better. Oh, whatever. If she's in my, if she's giving me shade, she's giving me shade. Um, I just want to get on, on here and give an update about kind of things that had happened recently, um, where I was mentally the last week or so, because it was really hard. I was really, I was, I was making myself sick. And as you can see, 
I'm feeling pretty. It's that hunt for perspective kind of thing. I kind of know what triggered me and why. Like there's reason, you know, there was, it wasn't no reason. There was reason for it. I was exhausted. I was coming off of this huge trip of being busy and then not being busy. And then my husband left. And then I was a lot, like there's all these things. And just kind of three, four, five days in knowing, okay, this I have to, now I have to talk to this person. Now I've got to put it out there and at least drop something and say, hey, are my feelings valid here or are they crazy? And what was great about it is that they got back to me and they said, you're not crazy. First of all, you're not crazy. And yeah, a decent amount of this is valid, but some of it you were overreacting to. That's like the best possible outcome, you know, because in that way I felt like it was justified to a degree but I did. I overdid it. And I know that about myself. And it makes me mad that I let myself go there. Um, you know, medication isn't 100% perfect. And you have to learn some things regardless. You know, it's you're never going to find a, a fix-all, a, 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 an everything fix everything, fix-all. You're just not, you're not going to find it. So the I think the goal is to learn as you go and to learn as you grow and I, I, you know, I identified I had a problem. I really wish my husband hadn't been gone for this particular week because um, I do think that if he had left next week and I had gotten through all of this, I wouldn't have had this at all. But I feel like, you know, I was meant to learn this lesson again for whatever reason. Um, maybe it's just too easy for me to forget that it's – I can – I can ruminate very quickly <laughs> without much notice, and I need to be careful of that moving forward. So anyway, well, I'm sorry this got so long. I don't even know what we're at time-wise here, but thank you all so much for joining me. I'll attach the little um, link that I did just for the AI overview for what rumination is. Um, so you can kind of, if you want to kind of expand from there and browse from there, at least you've got some links to go off of and get you started. Um, but thank you so much for joining me today. I've missed you guys. I'm really hoping to get back at this and be more frequent with it. But I am liking that I can just do whatever pace I want to do. And I appreciate um, all of your support and encouragement. You guys have been so awesome with this channel, and with me being open about mental illness and what I experience with it. And uh, I really, really appreciate that very much. And I will be back um, again hopefully very soon. So you have a wonderful rest of your week and weekend. And uh, remember, self-care is not selfish. Bye now.